Hey everyone, Eric here. This video is about something I almost always see people miscalculate, which is how to calculate the CAC payback period for subscription-based businesses. The issue almost always comes down to the fact that people are not cohortizing their business performance, so I'll show you exactly how to do that right now. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so CAC payback period for subscription-based businesses. So who's this video for and why does it matter? This applies to any business selling a product or service on a subscription. So that could be e-commerce or omni-channel retail businesses selling physical products on subscriptions. That could be SaaS businesses selling software on a subscription. Uh, the dynamics are the same and the issues that I see in the calculation of the CAC payback period are the same across all of these businesses. So the big warning here is that pretty much everyone is calculating this incorrectly the payback period itself, and the magnitude of error uh, is generally, people tell me what their CAC payback period is, and then I calculate it using a different framework, and generally the CAC paybacks are somewhere between 20 to 100%, and sometimes even 200%, longer than people think they are. So first, let's just dive into a couple quick definitions to make sure we're all on the same page, and then I will show you how to calculate and think about this. So the first thing is the customer acquisition cost. So this is just the marketing investment you make to get one customer to buy for the very first time. Next is gross profit, AKA gross margin. So this is just the product level profit you make off a customer before operating costs. So for a software business that's selling software, that's just revenue minus hosting minus customer support. And if you're selling a physical product like an e-commerce business, You'd also subtract the product costs, uh, the cost to manufacture the product, and also the fulfillment costs. So it's basically how much does it cost to deliver the product to the customer, and that's your gross profit. Revenue minus uh, the cost to deliver to the customer. The CAC payback period is when you break even on your relationship with a customer. So how long does it take to make back in gross profit what you spent in CAC to acquire the customer? And after you break even, all the future money that you generate off that customer is profit to the company. And then finally, uh, a customer cohort is what we need to really understand this. And it's a group of customers that all purchased for the very first time in the same month. And then we follow that group over their lifetime. And one quick thing to note, the CAC payback period, it may be measured in months, or it can also be measured in the number of orders. And so it's commonly measured in months if you're selling like software on a subscription and they get billed every month. But if you're selling something like a physical product on a subscription where people can skip months or the frequency is once every two months or once every three months, it's better to track the payback period in terms of number of orders because a uh, number of months can actually vary even with when people are purchasing the same amount of orders. Okay, so here's the classic miscalculation that I see when I talk to people. They say, okay, for one customer, I make $50 per month in revenue off them. The COGS are $22 per month. So my monthly gross profit is $28. And I spent $90 in CAC to acquire that customer. So I make back my CAC, $90, in 3.2 months, right? So I, 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 I make you know, $28 in month one, $28 in month two, $28 in month three, and so by that time I've made $84. And so in a little over three months, I pay back my CAC, right? 3.2 months, wrong, completely wrong. So here's the issue. This assumes, this model here, assumes no churn rate. It assumes that all of your customers have a 0% churn rate. But your business does not exist uh, on a one customer basis that never churns. That's not how it works. So basically you acquire a group of customers and they all make their first order. But by the time they get to their second order, a bunch of them have actually dropped off. So your gross profit is not the same in month one as it is in month two, it declines. And in month three, the gross profit stream declines and it declines and declines. But the CAC is always the same in month one because you need to acquire all the customers even if they churn in the second month. So you have a declining gross profit stream and that's the root of this miscalculation. So 3.2 months doesn't represent the business dynamics because 
customers churn uh, at many different points in their lifetime, month one, month two, month 20. And so you need to look at the cohorts to understand this. And the full cohorts will help you see how much money you allocated into the customer acquisition. And then from that group of customers, how much cash flow did you make back to pay back the CAC? And, and then you can really see the, the real math here. So first, we're going to look at a scenario uh, with a higher churn group of customers. You see higher churn rates in businesses that sell physical products. And then next, we're going to look at a scenario where there's a lower churn rate. And this is more common with businesses that sell software. By the way, if you're finding this content valuable, please like and subscribe if you want to support my channel. Let's dive in here. So in this scenario, we have the exact same unit economics. We have uh, customers, we make $50 per month. We spend $22 in COGS, and so we make $28 in gross profit. And our CAC is $90. So we thought that our CAC payback period was 3.2 months. So here's how to really look at this. So we are going to track a cohort of customers from July, which was 3,500 customers and really understand the financials of that group. So here you can see the lifetime orders, order one, two, three, and the retention of those 3,500 customers. So for the first order, retention was 100% because they all bought the first order. But by the second order, actually what we see is that only 75% of those 3,500 customers actually made it to the second order. So a quarter of them turned off. Then by the third order, uh, we only have 50% of the customers left. So only 1,750 customers bought the third order. And so if we follow this all the way down, what we see is by order 18, basically most of the customers have churned. And these are the types of basically retention numbers that are very common in, in retail and in e-commerce. So the first question here is, how much did we spend in marketing to acquire these customers in the first place? So we have 3,500 customers, and we spent $90 per customer to acquire them. So we spent $315,000 to acquire these customers. So in month one, those customers, the 3,500, generated uh, $98,000 for us in profit, right? $28 times 3,500. But in month two, the profit stream declines because now the customers, it's only 2,600 and 25 customers times $28. And in month three, what you can see here is the gross profit declines each month. And so the big question here is if we add up the gross profit cumulatively, so if we look at this here, so what we do is we take the 90,000 uh, and we add it to the 73,000. And so we're really trying to see, is there a point at which we generate cumulatively enough gross profit to even pay back the original customer acquisition costs. And what we see here is we only cross 315,000 in month eight because the decline in the uh, sort of customer cohort, um, it's not 3.2 months. It actually takes us around eight months to pay back the CAC. So you can see this here, the cumulative payback. What I'll do is I'll say, you know, in this month, you know, we had 315,000 in cash go out. And then what you can see here is that um, we made back 98,000. So cumulatively, we're down 217,000. And so you can see the kind of payback here over the whole cohort. So now we're at negative 143. And you see that finally, we break even on the CAC here in month eight. So again, you know, if you're allocating millions of dollars of capital into your business, thinking that your payback period is 3.2 months and it's eight months, that's a really big issue. So uh, the margin of error here is really about 150%. It's almost three times as, as long as we thought. And before we move to the next example, which is a pretty different situation, I want to thank the co-creator of this lesson and the sponsor of this video, Order Group a company that's helping a lot of businesses improve their CAC payback performance. OrderGroove helps e-commerce brands and retailers build and manage huge subscription programs. Many of the most important companies in the space, companies like the Dollar Shave Club, La Colombe, L'Oreal, PetSmart, 
have chosen Order Groove to power their subscriptions. Also, I personally just joined their company as a director of commerce strategy and growth, so I will be on the team helping advise you if you end up working with us. So if you're currently running a subscription business and need more flexibility around your offers and a team to advise you on strategy, or you're on a homegrown system and want to save on your technology costs, come schedule a demo with us and we'd love to talk to you about how we can help. And if you mention me or this video, you'll be eligible to receive 10% off your annual contract. Okay, so now let's look at uh, a similar example, but this time for a business selling software. So this is scenario two, lower churn business, and it's a SaaS startup. So the customer count in terms of the July cohort is exactly the same, 3,500 customers. The unit economics in terms of revenue, COGS, and gross profit are the same, but the one thing that we did differently is that we said that the CAC was 199. So instead of 90, now it's 199. So it's a little bit more than double. And generally, because SaaS businesses have a higher retention rates and often higher gross profit margins as well, they can afford much higher customer acquisition costs. So according to the original analysis, which is incorrect, uh, the CAC payback period is 7.1 orders. So now let's recalculate the CAC payback period using our customer cohorts to see really how long it takes for us to recover our customer acquisition. So first thing we're going to do is let's look at the retention by orders. So what you'll see is that instead of you know going from 3,500 customers and then sort of the retention dropping off really quickly, we see a much more gradual decline in the retention. And so by the end of year one here, so 12 months, you see we still have 45% of our customers. By the end of year two, we still have 15%. And it isn't until we hit 36 months that we've mostly churned off our customers. So um, if we take the original 3,500 customers and then we just multiply that by this sort of uh, retention cohort, you see that the tail uh, of our customers, our total active customers, you know, we have a lot more customers generating revenue and generating profits for us for a much longer period of time. And so this changes sort of the magnitude of the issue. So let's look at our customer acquisition cost would be 3,500 customers times 199. So this is higher. This is uh, almost 700,000 instead of 315, but the retention is much better. So you see gross profit here is 98,000 and then it only drops to 93,088. So we're generating a lot more gross profit. And so the question is, here we have the cumulative gross profit. When does it surpass 696? That's when we break even. And here you can see um, that it does so in really sometime in, in, in month nine. So month nine is really when you actually break even. And so, you know, still month nine is, is longer, sort of nine months is, is longer than seven months. So you could say, you know, the margin of error is probably about 27%. So if you put a dollar into marketing, you get it back 27% um, longer than you thought based on the initial analysis. So the lower your churn, the less dramatic the miscalculation is. But all businesses will miscalculate this if they are not uh, cohortizing their payback period. And with this business as well, it's good to see um, in the prior example, we paid back our CAC, but then we barely squeezed out any profit. So this business fundamentally has issues with its unique economics. And basically, I wouldn't say that it's in a good position at all. It would need to rethink its pricing, re need to rethink everything. This business breaks even, but because there's still a large active customer base, actually, this is all profit. So it ends up paying back its CAC, and then it pays back its CAC um, you know, again, so that's sort of a two LTV to CAC ratio, and then it keeps going up. So this business in this, is going to be in a stronger position to be able to generate cash flow. And the other thing I just wanted to highlight is, you know, the CAC itself it really, really changes the situation. So if your CAC was 125, your business, you know, basically is going to be breaking even in month five. If your CAC was you know, 225, well, then your business is, is breaking even in month 11. So small fluctuations in CAC basically kind of 
dramatically impact the performance of your overall business. So it's good to have a framework like this to uh, do scenario analysis with. Okay, so in terms of takeaways, higher churn businesses have extremely sensitive CAC payback dynamics. So we were you know, paying back our CAC in about two to three times as long as we thought in the first example. But in the second example with the lower churn scenario, we were only miscalculating by about 27%, which is still not good, but it's not as extreme. So miscalculating your CAC payback in a dramatic way can be catastrophic for your business, especially if you're burning money. If you are uh, misunderstanding cash in versus cash out, that is a huge problem. So capital allocators must understand the payback profile of their investments inside their companies. Okay, so I hope you now understand how to calculate CAC payback periods for subscription-based businesses. First off, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Also, if you want to download this model, you can download it completely for free with the link in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.